Are you ready to have our Q&A? Are we ready to do that with Pastor Keith? Pastor Keith, are you there? I'm right here. Hey. Looking forward to it. How are you? <laughs> doing, doing well. Good, good, good. All right. Well, the chat was on fire today, Pastor Keith. Ah, uh, good. Yeah, and long so we've got a couple. They were, as long as the right kind of fire, we're all set. <laughs> yeah, yeah. we got a couple of questions here, and I think that they are such great questions. The first question is from Dan, and it says, was Jesus referring to loving one another only between Christ followers, or was Jesus talking about loving all people? He, he teaches both, but in that, uh, in that particular um, context, he's only referring to his followers because he's basically saying, don't expect people who have not experienced my love to be able to love at the level you do, but you guys have been loved by me. So he says, love as I have loved you. So it, it doesn't mean we're off the hook of loving people that aren't followers of Jesus, you know, the, but, but if they, if they uh, see us loving one another, Jesus said that's what's going to attract them to something that they don't have outside of the community of faith, outside of following Jesus. And so, uh, but, you know, God so loved the world. world. Jesus loved died world. for us not because, uh, because he knew we would follow him. Remember that... Um, Remember that guy who rejected Jesus and, and uh, he says, I've followed all these commands. And Jesus said, no, but you got to leave everything to follow me. Mm. It's going to cost you everything. And, 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 the, and Je it says, Jesus went away. Uh, Jesus went away. And it says, he loved him. He loved him. You know, even though we reject him, mm. he, he loved him. You know, you look at the lost sheep, right? Jesus goes after the one that, that's gone their own way. He loves those outside, right? He, that, that's, otherwise, where would you and I be? But in that context where he says, uh, by this will all men know you are my disciples if you love one another, he's referring in that context to uh, the love that we have because we've experienced his love. Mm. That's so good. Thanks, Pastor Keith. Okay, we have another one here. How do we maintain a balance between spirit and truth? How do we hold these two elements in proper proportion? Yeah, I'd say Jesus. Like mm. I, when I would, I would see a lot of silly stuff happening in the name of Jesus when I was growing up in the church, and I see a lot of churches drying up, and then I just find Jesus was my reference point. He was the uh, the, the go-to place where I'd say that's what spirit and truth look like when they're perfectly combined, right? Yeah. Because, uh, you know, Jesus would say, you know, God is spirit and those who must worship him are spirit and truth. But he, he, but he was so real. Then he'd go and help uh, people get fed, you know. So he, he was so real about combining spirit and truth. Remember when he supernaturally he healed that girl? Right. And then... Uh, and then he raised her from the dead, actually. And then he said to the parents, give her something to eat. You know, uh, he, he, just, he just could combine the natural and the supernatural, the spirit and the truth, so naturally, you know. <laughs> it wasn't weird. It wasn't uh, silly. It, it, was, it was above understanding, but it wasn't, uh, you know, freak out mystical. It was real. Mm. And uh, when Jesus did something of the spirit, it, it, it made spiritual sense, you know. So it, I, I'd say whatever you see going on or someone says, oh, the Spirit said this, go check it out with Jesus and what he teaches and see if it lines up with that. If someone says, oh, God doesn't heal today or there's no, it's just all truth, it's all doctrine, go check it out with Jesus. He said, I want you to go out and heal people. Mm. That's good, Pastor Keith. All right, we've got another one here from PTL. It says, what about people who have been hurt by other people at church? Would they be better, with, uh, would they be better off without community at church? Uh, no. The, mm. the, the, uh, you, you, can, you can learn to love someone even if you don't trust them. Right. When you realize we're all broken and we're all in the process of being restored. As a matter of fact, um, we, you know, some people think in order to, in order to really forgive someone, I have to be, I have to be totally friends with them. You know, no, 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 because that person in their brokenness may continue to hurt you and others. And so you're, you're wise to that. You're wise to that, but you don't hold anything in your heart against them. You, 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 you love them, 
in the sense that you want God's best for them. That doesn't yeah. mean you're going to be buddy buddies or, or be really close to people in the community of faith that you have learned. They, they, they can continue to hurt. They're still broken there. And, and maybe there's not that level of trust, but you still love them. You, so you still do church with them and, and you pray for their for them to be healed up in the area that they are broken. So you just get more mature uh, and, and you say, you know, I'm not expecting perfection from <laughs> anybody in here. We're all broken, mm -hmm. but we're all following Jesus together. And so I have community uh, for that reason. Yeah. Yeah, that's so good. Um, and I just even think of that first, like that even Jesus himself, like there were people that were doing harmful things and hurtful things and people that were hurting the church and things like that. But um, for him, community was where it was at. It was important to maintain community despite maybe not all of us getting to along perfectly. Yeah, I, the reality is, and I'm not minimizing this person's yeah. hurt, but if any one of us, me included, let me tell you, I've got some, you want to see my scars and wounds? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, like in the church, from people who say they follow Jesus, but, but the thing is, I don't give up on them, because Jesus doesn't give up on me. And uh, I'm broken too. And I have areas I need him to restore me. So just because their areas of hurting people are different from my ways of hurting people, right. or I don't hurt people as much as they do, I still hurt people. We all are sinners. We all need this Savior, Jesus. And uh, we're all, um, the way that we show that we love Jesus is we love one another despite one another's faults and failures. Mm. That's great. Okay, I have another one here. We're going to keep them coming. Um, what tips can we use to establish a healthy daily meeting with God? Yeah, that's, that's a great a, that's question. A, that's a, a great question. It's about prayer, and we're going to have some future teachings that are going to come up on that. Uh, matter of fact, Pastor Jessica is working on something right now that's actually going to just, you know, nail that in terms of meeting a need. Uh, but, you know, the, the I, I find the best thing is to have a prayer plan. Um, and just, you know, the, for years it was the outer court, inner court of the Old Testament for me. Then it was the Lord's Prayer. Uh, now I have a, a different way that would just take too long to explain in, instead of uh, in the context that we're in, we're just answering a question. But, I, but there are lots there. Um, great prayer plans and some of you just get on the in the chat room there and uh, some online resources i yeah. sort of come up with my own but i know a lot of people is it the jesus project and stuff like they just have some great resources for praying but i for years i you can't go wrong with the lord's prayer right our father in heaven hallowed be your name starting off with worship your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven praying for others intercession and then give us this day our daily bread that's where you pray about your own needs and you've worshiped god prayed for others by the time you get to your own needs they're put in perspective <laughs> and you have a lot more faith and then there's that praying about a clean heart you know forgiveness and relationships mm -hmm. and your kingdom come lord uh, 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 on earth as it is in heaven and and uh, and uh, yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. So you return to praise at the end of it. You know, just, just uh, what's there, the Acts prayer too, you know? Uh, there's just so many prayer plans that are out there. Yeah. And uh, I, I'd say the, there's no bad way to do it. Mm. You, you know, just to, just to, just to do it. <laughs> go to God and uh, adjust your own personality. Mm. Uh, you're his child. We have children of different personalities. They approach us differently and uh, th they communicate differently. So be yourself, be real, um, but, but have a prayer plan. Yeah, that's uh, very similar to what we were talking about even last week about um, how we pray or a couple weeks ago about how we pray. And we had a family in the chat talking about how they write it down. And uh, we said, whatever, however it works for you, just just, ma just, make it work for you. Totally. And I think that's such a great idea too. Okay, we have another question here from Josh W. I have a question about joining a community of faith, especially on fostering relationships with fellow Christians. What are some practical and realistic steps for individuals who experience a lot of brokenness and may have challenges to become vulnerable in fellowship of faith? Yeah, no, it sounds like a little bit, does it you too stuff? Like, like how can I trust maybe? Yeah, yeah, okay. like how do, I, how do I take that step of faith and how yeah, do I go yeah. out and, and do that? I'd say find um, a church community that, you know, has a solid reputation about following Jesus, living for Jesus, f 
doing what Jesus says his church should be about, as we saw in our teaching time today. You know, make sure that part's right. You don't mm -hmm. want to join a cult, you know. Right. Find out, <laughs> you know, oh, they, they really care about each other, but they, they haven't got the truth part together, you know. So, so find a, a solid community and then find with, go on their website and find, um, you know, if you're new to Jesus, there's Alpha. You know, if you're a young adult, find the young adults group and get into their times where they discuss the Bible together. I was part of the, you and I, his staff were part of that young adults um, online Bible study yeah. kind of time for, for a year or so. So, you know, find the group, you know, and if there's specialized needs, you're grieving, you're mourning, find a, a group. Because churches are, have great resources today in terms of helping people with their specific needs. So, so just uh, find a good place with this, you know, that's solid <laughs> in their truth and their spiritual um, health. But then uh, find the area that you would best fit in terms of where you're at in life. And, uh, and, and just trust. You know, just take that step. And uh, th that's where trust will grow. That's great. Um, okay, we've got another one. They're still coming, Pastor Keith. Are you are you still kicking? Listen, I will <laughs> do what I I told the people last week. What did I say? I'll miss my uh, I'd miss my spaghetti lunch to stay with you <laughs> okay, and answer questions. Okay, well, questions. that's so, that's you know, pretty special. I know. What did Jesus say when his disciples came back? What, talking to that woman, the way he says, "I've had food that you guys don't even know about," you know, and <laughs> and they're thinking, well, "I don't see any food around here." You yeah. know, with lots of water, but <laughs> exactly. You know, I'm happy to. Be here for to serve. That's awesome. Okay, so I have a question here from Marcus. Could Pastor Keith touch more on how iron sharpens iron and how we could expand beyond the echo chambers and trust communities? Oh, this, listen, this, can we take this and give it to the whole world? Mm. <laughs> Man, have we ever been more polarized? Right. You know, I, I read last week that Christians in the United States are gathering more around politics than they are around Jesus, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them don't even go to church, but they self-identify as evangelical. You know, there's, I believe, the evangel, the gospel, the good news about Jesus. But they don't go to church, and, uh, and yet they, they turn to politics almost as a substitute for where Jesus should be in their lives and, and doing the faith. So, so it, it's so important to... Um, to, to make sure that what we're about in, uh, in our walk with Jesus is, uh, is about, first and foremost, priority number one. You know, Jesus, you're numero uno in my life. And, and I want to live, even in politics, the way that you want me to conduct myself. So, mm -hmm. Jesus first. Yeah, that's great. Okay, one other, I got, I, they're still coming. What would be a good response to those from other faiths, such as Judaism and Islam, that are trying to question the authenticity of Christianity without getting into debates with them? Yeah, there's, uh, again, there's where the spirit and truth come, come up. You know, Jesus, in talking to this woman at the well that we talked, he, um, she, she believed erroneous things, like that was part of their statement of faith. And uh, Jesus corrects it, but he says, but, but basically, get to know God first, you know. And so when we, I mean, books have been written on this, and that's exactly where I would direct this person. Find the, um, whatever group you're trying to witness to, someone comes from Buddhism or Muslim or, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jehovah's Witness, whatever, find resources from a good organization, Google it and find good resources and, and read about it. But when you're witnessing to someone, the best thing you can do is, is be Jesus, live the Jesus mm. life. Yeah. And when you mess up, say, oh, listen, I shouldn't have said that yesterday. I, I'm sorry. I'm a follower of Jesus and I, I, I really want to get better and better at doing that right. You know, just live the Jesus life right. and then watch this. They'll go through a difficult time in their life where their religion doesn't cut it and guess who they'll turn to they'll turn to you and you'll you'll, you'll say not in a uh, talk down way but in a coming alongside and loving and caring way uh, listen I'll, I'll, i promise you this i do pray every night and i'll pray with you about that mm -hmm. you know my wife and i have seen people that once you get to know them and, and they get to know that you're trustworthy and you say you're going to pray, man, it just opens up the conversation. The biggest thing you can do is keep 
exalting Jesus. The world has all kinds of religions. Yeah. It only has one Savior. Jesus is unique. And so anytime he gets talk about, oh, your religion says this, my religion, do what Jesus did with the woman at the well. Father's not interested in that. <laughs> He's interested in you knowing him. Right. And you know him when you worship him in spirit and truth. So, so um, again, Jesus, just talking about Jesus, living the Jesus life. Mm. Uh, and then the Holy Spirit goes to work. They go through a tough time and they want to know more. Uh, just, just keep living for Jesus and, and at the right times, speak on behalf of Jesus. Right. And Pastor Keith, I remember when we were in community group as young adults, and, and we, we had kind of had this conversation too, and I remember you saying something that, was, that really stuck to me, was um, in those moments, um, talking about your experience, talking yeah. about how yeah. Jesus has entered into your life, because that's something that people can't argue. They yeah. can't argue about your authentic and your personal relationship with Jesus. And so that really cuts, and I've done that so many times, and that cuts just the argumenting, like just the bickering back and forth, because That's I'm just excellent. telling you about my truth and what I've experienced with the Father. Yeah, it reminds me of that guy in the Gospels. Remember, Steph, where he says, uh, well, who he is, I don't know, but I'll tell you this, once I was blind and now I can see. You <laughs> right, know? exactly. You can't argue with that. And you're right, our personal story mm -hmm. um, is, is, is about, and again, centering on Jesus, not on religion or what church we go to, but centering on Jesus. That's the best way to help the Holy Spirit speak to people about Jesus in their own individual life. Right. Yeah. Okay, we've got one last question here. Yes. And I, I love this question. And in fact, this is a question that I would love even for myself to have you lean into this a little bit. But it says this, it's from Josh. How do we deal with other people's personal convictions in the body of Christ that we don't have, but acknowledge that their conviction, should we acknowledge that their conviction is right? So that is a great question because I've also come across um, just in community, uh, some people are convicted for a certain thing, but you don't necessarily feel that conviction. Um, what do you do in those situations as you're journeying as a community? Yeah, and, and Steph goes right back to the very first Christians. Remember, for them, it was a big deal whether a woman wore a hat in public or mm. not, or had her head covered, or, or whether you ate meat offered to idols. And, and, and Paul is the best one to give us some guidelines, and he basically says, don't turn convictions into essentials. But he does say, respect the other person's conviction. Like, don't try and erode them or, or, or mock them or minimize them because maybe they're not strong in that area and they need some guardrails in that area of their life to, to keep them away from things. You know, maybe it, it helps them so they have different convictions than you do. But don't turn convictions into essentials, you know. And even in, in the body of Christ, you know, we're going to have people that have all kinds of convictions about all sorts of things. And if we're all following Jesus together, our convictions will become more and more what Jesus wants them to be. Mm. And, and so I would just say, you know, love them. Um, don't minimize their convictions or put them down because of them. And have your own convictions too. But the main thing is the reason we get together in community is not because we have the same convictions, but we have the same essentials. Right. And we talked about even the essentials of what it means to do church, even though there can be so many expressions. Well, there, every Christian is different, mm -hmm. has different gifts and personality and preferences, but we don't, that's not the glue that holds us together. Following Jesus together to care for one another and reach a world that needs him, that's what brings us together. Right. And this, not this exact question, but something similar came up last night. And you said, keeping the main thing the main thing. And yeah, that that's the, the main thing. The main thing is to keep the main thing the main, the main thing. thing. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, I actually have one more question, Pastor Keith. This is from, this is from Ellen. Um, and she says, Pastor Keith, will babies and toddlers that are too young without the confirmation of receiving Christ as their Savior go to be with Jesus when they die? You know, you see, you almost need to let Jesus answer that mm -hmm. because Jesus, 
on more than one occasion said, unless you become like this child, <laughs> yeah. you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So Jesus, just like every adult, he knows every child's heart. He knows the trajectory, the inclination, the direction of the heart. What would they would do if they did have the full meal deal gospel? <laughs> he knows how they would respond. It's the same for a child. But Jesus, on more than one occasion, just seems to answer that question by saying, hey, you know, unless you become as a child, like these ones here, with that, with that trust and that openness and that innocence. Unless you become like a child, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. And so he, he's, got them, he's got them covered. Much like he's got covered the people from the Old Testament who never even, they didn't even know anything about the cross. But, you know, remember when Jesus appeared on the Mount of Transfiguration, Elijah mm. and Moses were with him. Yeah. You know, we're going to see Ruth and Esther. I'm going to see two Esthers in heaven, my <laughs> wife's Esther. So, you know, we, we're... we're oh, Jesus knows every heart mm -hmm. and, and the direction, the inclination, what we would do if we did have the full meal deal gospel truth. He knows what we would do. Yeah. And so uh, children are in that category, and, and Jesus wants them in his kingdom forever. Yeah. I, I love what you said. We almost have to let Jesus answer that one. Because he does. <laughs> he does say that right in, the, yeah. right in Scripture, and that's yeah. something that we can take such comfort in knowing. Well, Pastor Keith, Thank you so much for taking the time. Oh, Steph, it's been great. To, you're a great host, and it's been great doing this morning. And, you know, when, when Esther and I finish uh, this gathering, we just, we just keep praying. And because uh, we know there's people that are hurting out there. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and, and we, we love our church family. And I know Pastor Jonathan, uh, he, his heart is so much the same that we just, we just pray that the Holy Spirit... We'll, we'll meet you and work in us during this pandemic time mm -hmm. what is pleasing in his sight. And uh, he'll meet our needs as we center our attention on him and, and care for each other and be his church. So great doing this morning with you, Steph. Thanks, you Pastor just had Keith. an extra sermon there, I guess. I did, just right there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much.